welcome back to Stuttgart. We're here at the Porsche Arena for the Adidas Rockstars 2019 edition, and we're here in the Adidas Rockstars live studio. My name is Liam Lonsdale, and today joining me as always is Sasha De Julian. Good to see you guys all. I hope you're excited for finals tonight. We are, certainly, first up. Yeah, first up, we have a whole packed program this uh, afternoon. We have a uh, uh, root setters joining us. We have Udo Neumann joining us, and we have Volker Schoffel, uh, Patrick Matros, and Dicky Korb joining us. We're going to get those guys in soon. First up, let's call those root setters in. Where are they? We have uh, Melissa Lenove, Adam Pustelnik, and Lauren Lepore. But nobody's bringing them in, which is always good. Come you guys, on in, guys come in. Yes, yeah. you now. they'll come eventually. Or maybe they won't. Sasha, let's uh, quickly talk about qualify. Oh, here they come. Come in, come in, come in. Hey, how's it going? Come sit. Join us in the middle. You can grab one microphone. Oh. There you go. And Sasha, you can do Adam and okay. uh, we'll do you guys. So uh, first of all, maybe we can introduce you, Adam, Mel, and uh, Lauren. Um, Adam, how long have you been route setting for? Um. Hard question. Um, I would say like 14 years, let's say. I was 14 years uh, when I was with Jackie on the course. Huh? Nice. That's, uh, you could call it some starting point, uh, some base. Huh? Cool. Of course, a little bit before, but let's call it like that. Huh? Nice. And Melissa, what about you? Uh, since 2013, my very first competition, like master event in uh, Sweden. And you sat for that. Ah, which one was that? Uh, the last party of mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And Lauren, how long have you been route setting? 28 years. Quite long time. Yeah. Longer than Sasha's been alive. <laughs> well, Melissa is a well-known competitor in this event. Melissa, when you can be at last year, up until last year, right? Actually, I stopped competing since two years right now. And But sometimes I do some master events like Adidas Rockstar for sure because it's very fun and the crowd is pretty much like it's amazing and the energy is amazing so sometimes i come back yeah we love having you back <laughs> laurent can you tell us a little bit about the style you're the head route setter for adidas rockstars and have been for a number of years what is it about the setting here that differentiates it from other competitions uh, i think here is more laboratory uh, we try always to push some new stuff and uh, i think uh, Sometimes we take more risk and it's quite cool, yeah. It's a different way. We, we work more like a very big team and uh, it's very uh, team working. A little more than in the other place, I think. Okay. Adam, just quickly, what did you think of uh, qualifiers and semi-finals? How did they go, in your opinion, as a route setter? Um, I think they went really well. I mean, like, we could see a, a fair difference in the, in the difficulty between the qualifiers and the semis. Um, and as the qualifiers were a bit more of the round where we could see the climbers getting on top a little bit more and the semis were pushed a little bit more into the side to see really who's, who is in the best shape at this time, at this moment. And uh, basically that was, that was one of the main things that you could see from these two things. But I think at the end of it, when we took an overall look, it, it was something that we liked and it was something that was good. It's a fair question as well, how did you guys like it? Huh? Yeah, because I, how did we like it or how did you like it? I mean, it's important to see what you guys think. And I mean, we loved it. Only one boulder in the whole competition that's not been sent yet. That's not bad. Mel? Yeah, it's true. Like, the number four of the woman was a bit maybe too much. Yeah, but actually, the fight to, to go at the top, and that was pretty close. So, like, rotating sometimes is what I learned. It's really about small things. Mm -hmm. And you have to trust your feeling and sometimes it's hard so <laughs> yeah, it's a sure. learning process and I'm learning so much about with those so guys. Good. It's so good to see that development as well. Also I mean the skill level is so impressive that it's hard to anticipate just what the competitors are capable of and where that fine line is between what's possible and what's not possible. Yeah sure and I guess all of the boulders are possible and you know they're not going to be left there if they're not possible but are they possible in five minutes is always the question right? So, at that moment, it's the perfect time to welcome on our next guest to join us. Uh, with you guys, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Udo Neumann. Udo, one of the uh, great minds of competition climbing. And um, 
With you guys, you'll be able to see on the screen, uh, and you guys at home will also be able to see on the screen. Uh, we're going to look through some moves and talk about beta, basically. Yes, yes. Uh, would you want to explain what beta is for the people? Yeah, sure. So we're talking about the word beta as a, a use for the method. So beta is often what climbers will define as the method to do a boulder problem. Yeah, and also the sequence. I, I think it's used a lot in, 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 uh, for the sequence. You know, and it's just an example, uh, what would be called breaking beta. And, now, and I think there was, uh, this is Janja Gambre, the, the best woman climber at the moment. And she somehow, uh, maybe uh, her, her wrist was bothering her uh -huh. a little bit, or her fingers. She wasn't too happy with this move. And uh, was a little bit unusual for her, because this was certainly not the hardest move of the, uh, of the competition. But still, she, doesn't, uh, she didn't like it at the beginning. And um, many other athletes, less experienced athletes, would have just kept on trying the same thing again and again, you know, and maybe with more power. Or, uh, there are lots of things to improve, actually, to get the right foothold a little bit faster or more precise, you know. And we, here we see Mio Nonaka, another fantastic female climber. Mm -hmm. And she does this uh, probably intended beta. I mean, I don't know if the route setters even thought of, the, uh, of this. Uh, as, as, was this intended? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have two solutions, or you can uh, take the balance slowly. If you move your body too too fat, uh, you lose the hand. Mm -hmm. And it's why you have to find the balance. Uh. Yeah, and uh, you see that it's uh, rather physical, you know, the way she, uh, Mio does it, because she takes some time to get the, the uh, right foothold, you know, and while she's holding that, there's a lot of uh, uh, yeah, strain on her, on her right shoulder, you know. And now Janja just does this, you know. She's, after two failed attempts, she's kind of tired of, of uh, not doing the move and she just invents her own beta. And so and Shauna had actually done this beta as well. We saw two athletes use that method. Yes. What did yeah. you guys, can we pause it there? What did you guys think of, uh, of that when that happened? Uh, that possible possible like this, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, in this case we see that it was possible like this. Maybe you knew it was possible easy, already? But more powerful in the yeah. finger. Mm -hmm. so you see Yanya make, but the other, maybe they cannot take that like this with the finger. Interesting. Yeah, it was really just an example about what happened today. And I think it's uh, almost pointless if something works. It's, I, I find it almost pointless to, to look into what's better or uh, not as good. You know, it depends on so many things. One thing that shouldn't happen, and I'm sure the route, route setters uh, agree, is that uh, this, this moves, it's just slow motion, that something works and is a lot easier. Now, for example, that if he could do this move without a toe catch, I think this would be not good uh -huh. route setting. You know, if this would have worked, I would have considered, hmm, okay, if this is possible, maybe not ideal. Uh, no, I think you can also have the method to jump with the hand on the bigger blue one and on the, where they put the feet. Uh, and stop like this, and it's quite nice. Really? Uh, so go with the right hand? We, we, yeah, we see uh, Toby, one leg, Tobisco, make, make oh, like cool. this, and it was quite cool too. You have to be very big, but mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard. Ah, Tobisco did yeah. it like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, yes. Uh, again, this was for, for me, uh, like as a coach, if you prepare your athletes and you see that that, that something is a lot easier, you know, or, uh, then that would be a little bit annoying, you know, like it's also like for the spectators, it's a lot of perceived fairness. And if they see that somebody who is exceptionally tall, like uh, Topishko or so, uh, uh, can do it easily and the others can't, that would be n uh, not ideal, you know, like for, from from the route setting. But this is actually not uh, really what I wanted to, to <laughs> stress on. You know, it's just, I mean, this is probably how you thought it. And just to, to maybe go back, you know, because that on first sight, that looks really like it is, it would be considered to be the same beta, I think, because the sequence is uh, the same. But if you look, you know, the, the uh, uh, events happened, happened really at a different uh, 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 timing, with a different timing, and I think the video where they, when they get the toe catch, you know. So, but it's still, it's like at first glance, it would be the, considered to be a very uh, similar beta. But then, if you look closer, you find lots of differences. Uh. Yeah.
Interesting. Yeah. That's Yannick Floet on the left yeah. and Yerne Kruder on the, the right uh, there. You see the hand for, from uh, uh, Yerne is very more uh, directly in the way. Yeah, much in the yeah, center. Right. Master with the second hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so what I wanted to talk about is, for, for me, the takeaway as a coach is that it's, it is a lot uh, better to uh, ask your athletes to, to understand the f underlying physics of, of a, a, a move. You know? For example, in this case, you have a, there's a typical case of action-reaction. You know? That's the old Newton thing, where, where we can stop it. Now she swings in, in one plane. Oh, she swings in in one plane. And then, of course, there will be a reaction in, in, in the other direction. You know? And the, uh, the, the gag or the crux or the difficulty of this particular move is to transfer from one plane into the other. No, no. In this case, you see, we put another feet on the left. Uh, uh, we put another feet on the left, the big uh, black volume, on the yellow volume, on the white volume, and they don't use it. And it was exactly to make this one transfer more easy. And the girl, they don't think to use it, but it was quite crazy to use. Yeah, yeah, this is another, I mean, for my, some might even find it confusing that there's another option, you know, like, and the, the term is affordances, you know, that is, is basically the most valuable skill any climber can have is to detect affordances, you know. And here, for example, you see it's almost good, but what, what makes it not work is that there's still some uh, trajectory that is not really helping her, you know, she's not linear. Uh, 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 to the hold, you know. Now and this one was amazing. This yes, was Elnaz yes. Rakabi of Iran. Yes. No, and she, uh, uh, that, uh, if you can make it work, that's really nice. So she uh, steps through. And again, we have a totally different air quotes beta here. And um, I like, uh, we don't check this. We don't see this method. <laughs> but Adam, the the mantel is very hard after all. When you saw that move, Adam, what, what were you thinking when that happened? Um, say again, because uh, I didn't... When Elnaz did it in this method, yeah. what was going through your mind? What was coming through my mind? Yeah. Like, wonder if she can get out of it. Yeah. And that was coming through my mind. I wonder if she can get, you know, get up from this position, because it was not easy, although it looked like she was quite close she was at close. some point. Huh? If she would made it second time, maybe we would have seen this method go through. And probably that's something Berudo is saying, that it's one of these things where suddenly you see a different method and you begin to think, well, but does it make it easier? And if it makes it easier, how does it affect the score of the competitors? And, you know, what will happen if other competitors would find it, you know? And that's the point where you begin to question if we did a good job as Ruth said this or no. The thing that really struck me about this move was the power with which she went at the wall. You know, if we watch that, she was so explosive into the wall. You know, if we watch it in full speed or, you know, slow motion, <laughs> she like full speed, attacks full slow motion. <laughs> the wall. So look how, much, how high she is on that volume. Really attacks it to come in. Such a cool move. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this is basically the, the new thing in, in bordering, the, the way they shape the holes and they said nowadays it makes it really 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 hard to apply force you know and force is only uh, what you can apply what you can transfer force doesn't happen by itself you know it's about, oh, oh, and there's a lot of redirection and kind of, of weird uh, uh, um, shapes you know that make it really really difficult uh, to apply force and so what we're looking at here now udo yeah, uh, just two more examples, now, again, going back to the beta thing, two uh, successful attempts of, of this move, you know, and you see how nicely both of them, t each in their way, transfer uh, the, the, the force and redirect you know, the force. This is really nice, you know, coming, they swing in to the wall, and then they redirect uh, uh, the force to the right and the momentum. The thing that I really loved about Oriane's style there, look how open her hips were. It was really incredible. Yes. She w was so open to yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah. Look at and, that. And it's really, it happens to me all the time, you know? Like, I, I, uh, I watch the videos after a competition, and I think, ah, okay, it's not, now if I see an unsuccessful attempt, and I see the hips open as, uh, as uh, Oriane does it, you know, I would think, ah, yeah, this is not ideal, you know, because it doesn't seem to be very helpful. Your left foot, if you look, this is what so you mean, huh? how open it is. But then, 
she gets it really nicely uh, redirected. And this is what I meant at the beginning, you know, I, I really shy back from like blanket assumption, okay, this is the way you have to do it. You know? It's all about uh, uh, being adaptable and, and finding the affordances that make the move possible for you. And uh, uh, again, not really wasting any thoughts on the road setter's intention. Amazing. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, we try to make some new construction and they just have to to be plastic and found the way yeah. in general. Oh. And so, Melissa, the question that I have for you is uh, about the finals. What can we expect to see in the finals without giving too much away? Oh, that's a good question. Um, something different um, than the semi-final for sure. Something different? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. an easy, easy answer, right? Yeah, but you can give us a little more detail. Let you know all the people to watch. Um, <laughs> okay. Kevin Jurgensen. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't say. Maybe you can say. Yeah, we never speak about the final before the final. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about yeah, Fight Club. Yeah, Rule number one. Uh, we give you the surprise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sasha, anything yeah. that you want to ask these guys? Um, I am excited to see what you guys have put together for tonight. Yeah, well, congratulations again on the comp so far. It's been amazing, truly fascinating. Udo, thank you as always for your information. Always a great watch and very informative. Um, we have some more guests coming up, so we'll say thank you and bye-bye to you guys. Um, and Sasha, we're going to welcome to the stage in just a second uh, Professor Dr. Volker Schoffel, um, Patrick Metros and Dickie Korb, the guys from uh, Gimme Craft. Tell me about your relationship with these guys. So I've actually gone to Germany and trained with Dickie in the past. Dickie and Patrick are both trainers of Alex Megas, for those of you who are local to Germany or global, probably know who Alex Megas is. They should do. <laughs> And uh, Dr. Volker actually last year diagnosed me with a stress fracture. So we worked together. We went for a 10K run this morning, and I heard a little bit about what he'll be telling us today on camera. Any stress fractures? No stress fractures this morning. Great. Let's welcome uh, Volker, Dickie, and Patrick. Hey. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Good to see you. Welcome. Take a seat. Welcome. Take a seat. Welcome. Right, you, uh, Folke, if you sit in the middle, okay. and then you have the microphone. Uh, awesome. Okay, so Folke, maybe start by telling us a little bit about what you do. So I'm, I'm a medical doctor, and I focus on climbing injuries and sports medicine, and I work as the medical officer here at the Rockstars. Sure, your official doctor. Yes. Not too much work so far. Well, I'm happy not to work here. I get <laughs> enough work during week time in the hospital. And, uh, and Dickie, what about you? Tell us, uh, what, what's your job? My job is to be a trainer, a coach. Um, I'm training a lot of uh, athletes um, around the world. Adidas, sponsored athletes, other athletes. Sometimes Sasha when she's around. So yeah, that's my job. And Patrick, what's your specialty? I'm a sports scientist and my main job is working at university as a lecturer in sports science and educational science. And beside that, I'm a trainer and coach for athletes in climbing. Awesome. And so, um, you know, you guys work with the best athletes in the world when it comes to climbing. Um, you know, what are the, the latest trends that we're seeing in athletes from an injury or, you know, imbalance perspective? So, well, from an injury uh, perspective, lately with the integration to the Olympic program, actually, we see more, um, a more intense training times. So you see a slightly increase in injuries. We see more knee and shoulder injuries due to the more three-dimensional kind of climbing. And I think that the, that the point of prophylaxis and injury prevention is getting more important to keep the athletes healthy during the whole process until the Olympic Games. And Patrick, I find you're a data scientist and I find more and more so climbing and data are coming together and we're having more research. How do you find over the last years Climbing and science have came together to inform training. Yeah, I um, noticed there uh, a big uh, progress in this whole uh, scene and the whole field. 
because on the one hand we have this technological progress in getting smart technology into climbing, for example sensors for fingerboarding, and on the other hand we have this kind of associations who just uh, scientists all around the world coming together, sharing knowledge, like the IRCRA, um, where everyone um, is yeah, sharing some, some knowledge and this is a big step forward in training. It's kind of yeah, evidence-based training. On the other hand, you should not ne uh, neglect some things like the, yeah, things you can measure, you know? It's like the feeling, the relationship to the athlete. And as a trainer, you have bring these two points together. That's, yeah, that's the mission. <laughs> and so Dicky, when it comes to actual strength and conditioning and that type of training, um, how's that changed in recent years from, from training, let's say five or 10 years ago? Are the methods changing? Are the, the styles changing? I think everything's changed. So uh, now we are going to the Olympic Games. It's uh, kind of, we need new athletes in the last years. Um, everything changed, this uh, Olympic combined format needs a completely different training style to what we trained before. And how does it, what's the change? Can you like give us some kind of insight into that? Some insiders? Insights, like if you, <laughs> you know, if, if for example, you know, if you were training someone just in bouldering, what are you training them now if it's the combined format? Yeah, that you have to switch, that you have to, to train um, a short period of boulder, then you go to lead. So it's not that you're only bouldering one day. So we try to, to imitate this style. And uh, so you start with speed, then you go to boulder and you end up with lead and that in one session. So um, it's a hard impact, I guess. Yeah, sure. And, and Volker, to go full circle, we must see more injuries, even just from fatigue purely to the fact that athletes are training more, athletes are putting through bo their body through stresses that they haven't so far. Yes, the, overall, the overall training load definitely increased a lot. And also the athletes who were specializing in one discipline, they now do more and more other work in the other disciplines, and that increases the stress and we, we see more overstrain injuries. And so the reason that you guys are here today isn't just to talk about training. You, you guys have a project together. Volker, maybe you can tell us yeah, a little. Yeah, we have this project which actually started last year here when we came together and discussed it and then Adidas took on and we're presenting it together later on. It's called ACT, Adjunct Compensatory Training. And um, basically it shows what we do with the professional athletes as a doctor and as trainers. So we, we developed a program to um, decrease the risk of injury and also to rehab after, after injuries. While we focus on neglected muscular slings, and actually, so it's a thing as a climber you can do in addition to the work your physiotherapist and your doctor is doing for you. Nice, and so that's kind of that in a summary. Maybe Dicky or Patrick or both, what's one tip that you could share with the, the folks at home if you know there's a climber that feels like they might be getting injured? What, what's a good tip for training that they might be able to work in there to prevent injury? I mean, uh, uh, first at all, you should uh, just, when you start climbing, uh, you should not exaggerate, which means that holding small holds, doing, yeah, let's say big dynamic moves, that's all things where there's a, a, a lot of high energy on uh, structures in the body, which maybe in the first years can't resist. So some overstress or injuries, there, there's a, a danger of, of, of that. And they're very tempting as well. Right. You know, there's a real temptation because they look cool, right? Yeah, right. And beside that, you should just take an eye on flexibility, mobility, and uh, training like the um, uh, our ACT training, which, let's say, uh, is a, a training beside climbing and exactly targets this muscle slings and range of motion which isn't targeted in climbing so much. Mm -hmm. And Dickie, ACT is a book, right? Can we have the mic? ACT is a book and a PDF download mm -hmm. file from Adidas. And um, yeah, I think we are really close to finish it. So um, in the next weeks. When maybe. and where might it be available? What do you think? So we definitely don't know yet where it will be hosted. Just just follow Adidas Rockstars on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It is hosted by Adidas and Planet Talk, and they actually covered all the costs. So it's a service to the climbing community. I will share it through the social media channels, and it will be hosted as a free downloadable 
PDF file and also we will distribute it at our workshops as books for free. Wow, what a resource. Well, first of all, thanks for joining us, but second of all, thanks for sharing such amazing knowledge. The climate community hopefully will benefit massively. Gentlemen, Patrick, Volker, Dickey, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the final. So big thank you to those guys. Um, you can go. <laughs> Cheers. Sasha, let's reunite back in the middle. Sorry. Let's get back in the middle. So Come on. Guys I won't bite. <laughs> uh, yeah, you were just about to say. No, I, I was just going to say that if you guys have noticed, training has definitely become a lot more off the wall than just on the wall. And if you look back to the historical nature of training, obviously Wolfgang Gulich was a huge um, part of climbing's history. Um, now in my own training, what I've experienced that was my next question. is that I've done a lot more in a gym to cross over to adventure training and also applying data analysis and metrics to informed, more s smart technology. And have you seen any increase or decrease in performance as a result of that? I've seen that my body overall can gain a lot more strength on a really recordable basis. So when I'm in my peak performance or working up to a trip, whether it's outdoor climbing, I don't compete anymore, um, I can really work with my trainer to have informed results. Nice. So I think that's pretty much us done. The last things to say, uh, we will be live again at 7.15. Yep. With our pre-show, we're going to have Kevin Jorgensen. We'll have Kevin Jorgensen, who will be just coming off his presentation on the Don Wall. Who else? You know who else. Special secret guest. He likes to wear yellow. I think he's German. He is German. Alex Magos will be joining us um, at some point after 7.15. Um, we'll be live on this channel again. In the meantime, get involved on social media at Adidas Rockstars on Instagram. Rockstars community on Facebook, hashtag Adidas Rockstars. Uh, we can get in touch with us as well on Instagram. What's yours? Just at, my name. At Sasha D. Julian and at Liam Lonsdale. There's various behind the scenes and fun things going on over there. Uh, I, think, I think that's us, mate. Looking forward to touching base with you guys in a few hours. Oh, yeah, and we've got the finals as well. We shouldn't forget to mention that. Finals will be live on adidas-rockstars.com backslash live. It will indeed. It'll be live on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all the fun places. Um, that's live from 8.15 local time. You'll have to extrapolate to work out what your time is on that. Sasha, thank you so much for a lovely little show there. Thank you, Liam. My name is Liam, and we'll be back at 7.15. Have a great afternoon.